Hi. Now for this example, you've got to find dy by dx for y equaling two times the inverse sine or arc sine of all of x minus 1 divided by 1 plus x. So if you'd like to have a go at this, as usual, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So you might want to fast forward if you want to check your answer out quickly. Otherwise, I'm just going to take you slowly through the work solution. So to do something like this, this is a typical example where you need to use the chain rule. And I would want to let t equal x minus 1 all over 1 plus x. So if I was to just draw a line down here, let's say then we let t equal x minus 1 all divided by 1 plus x. So that means that therefore we've got y equals 2 times the inverse sine or arc sine then of t. So when it comes to working out dy by dx then, using the chain rule we know it's dy by dt times dt by dx. So for dy by dt, I'm assuming that you're already familiar with differentiating the inverse sine of x. If not, do go back and check out my earlier video tutorials on that. Now, I showed you that if you differentiated the inverse sine of x, it was 1 all divided by the root of 1 minus x squared. So for this, it's going to be 1 all over the root of 1 minus t squared, okay, where the t is basically replacing the x. So if you were doing this straight off, okay, without putting this down here, obviously I would have t in my mind as x minus 1 over 1 plus x, so dy by dt would be 2 times the inverse sine of t. Differentiating that gives me 2, okay, 2 times the 1 here, all over the root of 1 minus t squared. But in place of t, I'm just going to write then x minus 1 all over 1 plus x. And all of that is squared. So we've basically then got the square root of all of that denominator through there. OK, let me just extend that division up there. So that's dy then by dt. Now I've got to multiply all of this then with dt dx. So to differentiate this then for dt dx, I'm going to need to use the quotient rule. So using the quotient rule then, we've got the bottom of the fraction, 1 plus x, which is then multiplied by the differential of the top, which is just going to be 1, and then it's minus the top of the fraction, x minus 1, multiplied by the differential of the bottom of the fraction, which is going to be 1. And all of that is divided by the bottom of the fraction, all squared. So that's 1 plus x, then, all squared. So that is essentially dy by dx, but obviously we need to clean it up. So cleaning this part up, we've got that it equals the 2 on the top, and then we've got this messy square root. Well, I could put that all over a common denominator, which would be 1 plus x all squared. OK, I'm just looking inside the square root here. Maybe I should put the square root down. OK, we'll do that. So for the 1 here, I'm going to have 1 times all of 1 plus x all squared. OK, so that's just giving me that 1 there. Then it's minus, and then I'll have all of x minus 1 all squared. Now, I can take 
the square root of the denominator here, that's just going to be simply 1 plus x. So what I'm going to do, because I'm running out of space here, is that would then be just over 1 plus x. So I'll just take that out. The square root now would just be of the top. And then I could multiply top and bottom by 1 plus x. So that's going to remove that from there and just place it on the top there. 2 times all of 1 plus x. OK, so I hope you're able to see that. And then when it comes to tidying this top up here, we've just got 1 plus x minus x plus another 1. And that's going to come to 2. And then we've got that all over 1 plus x all squared. So what I can see now is that that 1 plus x there will cancel with that 1 plus x squared there, just to leave us with 1 plus x. So what have we now got? Well, we've got the 2 times the 2 there, so that's going to be 4. And then underneath here, I'll write this 1 plus x first of all. OK, 1 plus x there. And if we were to square this out, these brackets, we're going to have 1 plus 2x plus x squared. And here we'd have minus x squared plus another 2x and then minus 1. So that's going to reduce down to simply the root of 4x. And then clearly I can take the square root of 4, which is 2, cancel it into that 4, leaving me with 2 on the top. And then it will be all divided by 1 plus x times the square root of x. And I think that's as simple as we're going to get it. OK, so hope you're able to get that. If not, that you can at least see where you might have gone wrong. OK.